Thanks, welcome everybody. First off, let me just say, I like to do this as casually as we can, where this is really just conversational. We're gonna walk a couple of blocks, talk about all kinds of different lighting conditions. Um, and I, you know, I really wanna hear from you guys what kind of questions and concerns you have about lighting. We get a lot of people that talk to us about um, the fact that the quarter is dark, the fact that it's, you know, it's that has an impact, a negative impact on the sense of security. Um, obviously, the aesthetic aspects of lighting in the French Quarter is important, but I do think that security and you know quality of life is very, very important, particularly with this topic. We'll go through the guidelines. We'll talk about you know different kinds of fixtures that we recommend. You'll see a lot of fixtures that we don't recommend and conditions that aren't great. Um, so it's kind of a great couple of blocks to kind of see all the things. You know, one of the things that we really, really focus on is illuminating the sidewalk. Um, obviously, for an aesthetic perspective, you want to be able to illuminate your doorway, you want the building to shine, but safety and security is really, really paramount. And, you know, most of our buildings are located on the property line, which makes that easier than some of these buildings like across the street that are set back. Because so with those conditions, even if you're going to do something that's a, a, you know, a subtle, discreet soffit lighting that might do great on your porch, most of that's not going to spill out onto the sidewalk. So we'll see some dark conditions uh, you know, that are to that, and we can give you some ideas about uh, how to even illuminate that better. So, all right. So let's go this way, and um, um, you can see that on this building here, they have these floodlights on either side. And although these are not fixtures that we approve, and there's a lot of these just, you know, floodlights with exposed bulbs, it does work to help get the, the light down on the sidewalk. These decorative fixtures are good for drawing attention to an entrance, which is what both of these do, but generally don't do a good job of lighting the sidewalk. So, and what we want to do is we want to have consistent lighting across the, the property. So what we would recommend is to have down lighting with a better fixture that is consistently illuminating this area. So you don't have light, dark, light, because then your eyes can't adjust well, you end up with shadow, um, and it also doesn't do a really good job of the aesthetic quality of illuminating your building. These Buildings that don't have overhangs like this are more difficult to illuminate because we, especially if you want to do it in a way that's discreet. This is not a, an example of, of lighting on a, a more contemporary building that's successful. Um, this building has these two decorative fixtures that we would not recommend. Um, they don't really make any sense on this style of building. Um, and we do have some other more subtle fixtures that what we would recommend something that would be down low to illuminate the sidewalk and not something that doesn't have anything to do architecturally with the style of the building. So, so when you say down low, like how? Well, there, you can actually, if you have some discrete fixtures that are even about this height, so it doesn't interrupt your eye, you know, but it nicely washes the sidewalk. So, Gene Zizig. How are you, sir? Oh, goodness, <laughs> Great to see you. Yeah. We're, we're doing a, a lighting uh, uh, walkabout for the Vivacore Commission Foundation. Y'all, this is Dr. Gene Sizek. He was my professor I at Tulane. You were playing tour guide out here. Nope, just. Well, uh, I mean, you are. Well, I am, but for, but for the right reason. <laughs> well, well, this is my first walk. Well, I'm glad to see you. From Tulane Medical Center. Wow. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, Good for my, you. My phone went out on me, and I couldn't get it charged <laughs> up, and I tried to call from Tulane. Oh no. Uh, so I just started walking. Well, it's a lovely night for a walk. And I stopped at a bar. Of course. Walked a little bit further, stopped, stopped at another bar. bar. <laughs> I've been dreaming about all these, I mean, not dreaming, but think about all the things that were here yeah. when I first moved here in uh, 1968. 
Wow. Yes, Dr. That, Sizik was one of the main, main preservationists that brought back the, the Foberg Marini. So we're... You got that on the Vukare. And the Vukare. Absolutely. <laughs> you great sometimes things they exist all along, but I still love them. Well, good to see you. Good seeing you. Take care. Doing all right? Doing great. Let's catch up. Good luck with everything. Thanks so much. I'm still, you know, I, I am back functioning. You good. Know. I'm glad. I haven't seen you in ages. But you know so I'm glad happens. you're back. Yes, I do. Yeah. So well, I'm glad you're back, though. So good. It turns out it's been happening for three or four years. Oh, God. All those falls I would do. And everybody thought I was just looking at something pretty. But it wasn't. <laughs> Anyway, well, have, have a good, a good one. trip and take care of this place. We yes. all love it very, very much. Actually, these are the kind that we are good with. Ah, Absolutely, really? yes. Right. Um, what we do recommend is both of these are backwards because we would prefer that you paint them out to be the color sure. to match the underside of the decking. So they've got them backwards, but you know. And this is, you know, exactly what we were just talking about, how, you know, it's a nice spacing with the various bays. It's a nice even wash. It's, you'll see this again when it gets a little darker. It's important to have all of the, the bulbs or the lamps of the same, you know, color rendering um, so that they're all of the same, you know, they're warm and you'll have this spotty kind of situation when they're, you know, they recommend that when you replace one, you replace them all so you have the same manufacturer and also two light bulbs do dim over time and so this way they're all consistent. In the, in the French Quarter, we recommend um, when you're buying light bulbs that you go towards the warm scale. Um, it's around 3000 um, K is what we recommend in that range. Obviously, this day and age, we have a lot of um, LED lamps that are, the color rendering is much better than it was years ago. You can get them in this warm range. Um, it's, they're much more economical. Um, obviously, these are not super easy to change out. So with an LED, you can put them in. You know, we encourage you to leave your lighting on overnight um, so you don't have to replace them as nearly as often. These Creole cottages with these Abba Vance, are also uh, good opportunities for lighting. You can see this one over here on the end has lighting that's discreet. A lot of times on corners, um, you know, you'll have a, a, the, a building that will do a good job of illuminating the main street and then not illuminating the side streets. These actually do a great job in getting it wrapped all the way around. So kudos for all of these four buildings. This is an entrance that tends to be very dark. It's a, it's a real missed opportunity for keeping this area more secure. Let's, let's say that that historic lamp there, um, or that that lamp is historic. We would not recommend that they remove it. We absolutely encourage that. Um, we just wanna make sure that we're doing, you know, we have a lot of technology at our disposal now that we didn't have 100 years ago. So there's a lot of things that we can do to add to it and make it work better. In that example, we wouldn't recommend another gas lantern because historically that's what you would have had and that's to draw attention to the entrance. But you see how you know, we have so many opportunities for lighting because we have so many overhangs. There's so many different kinds of buildings, I mean different kinds of overhangs. Um, and it's extremely underutilized. Um, our street lights now um, have a pretty intense LED light in them, which I don't think is particularly aesthetic. And I think that they need to be redone to where it's a warmer, you know, color rendering, for, um, particularly in this district. But it does do a decent job in illuminating the street. And, uh, you know, also, too, one of the things that we talked about a minute ago is what you don't want in lighting is bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. And that's kind of a problem that we have with these street lamps because they're not spaced closely enough to where you're going to get an even lighting. And so you have this really, really great, you know, bright spot around the light and then you get shadow and, and that's, that's, not, that's not a great, you know, situation for security. It, it's difficult on your eyes. Yeah, and one of the things that we'll see when it gets darker is these opportunities that are missed where people have you know, an overhang, they have a very simple solution to illuminating the sidewalk, illuminating their building, and they're either 
not taking advantage of it by having fi you know, light fixtures installed, or they have them installed but they're turned off. And so, you know, with, with LED lights, it isn't so much a, a cost thing as it once was because they're so efficient now that you can leave your lights on and not, you know, be blowing through your electric bill, so which is great. Um, a lot of people do tend to think that we, as the city or the Vaucouray Commission, we try to keep the French Quarter dark because it's charming and we are constantly beating the drum that that's not the case. It, so a little while ago we were talking about um, making sure that all of your lamps are the same color. And here is a good example of, you know, well-placed lighting. It does a great job in, uh, you know, illuminating evenly across the streetscape. But to be ticky, they've got warm, cold, warm, cold, warm, cold. And it just, it's, it's an, that's an easy fix and something that a lot of people probably don't think about. I gotta replace a bulb, I go to the hardware store, I grab the first one I see, but you can see that it does make a difference. Um, so one of the things we wanted to talk about, I mentioned earlier, this building here with the really, really pretty gas lanterns. Um, that's not a historic condition. It's really pretty, but it makes this corner really, really dark, um, which I, think is very evocative and beautiful, you know, but you could still keep it nice and warm. Two decorative lanterns on, on either side of the front door, discrete fixtures, you know, at each bay that were in a warm tone and at a decent level to where it doesn't, you know, you wouldn't even really notice it. It's just a nice washing of the, of the wall and the sidewalk. And you know, and we get a lot of applications for people that want to basically kind of do that, and they want to do, you know, street gas lanterns all the way in the back, with all the way down their dependency and all over their you know courtyard, which is beautiful, but it's just it's not historic, and that's how they were used to designate the entrance, whether that's the historic entrance or the you know if there's a modification to the building that you've done and you wanted to draw attention to that, you'll see that a lot of times on on doubles. Right that are no longer used as doubles. And so in that case, we only recommend the decorative fixture to be for the actual entrance door. You know, we try to maintain the, the historic use of, of, of lighting. Um, we pa you <laughs> Here's another example. On these upper galleries here, we also don't encourage the Pirates of the Caribbean lamps. <laughs> Um, that pretend to be the, these fake fire lamps that look like Pirates of the Caribbean at Disney World. You know, but we're not pretending that this is historic. You know, it's sort of like we want them to be discreet, so you're not really seeing it. We want you to have light. Like we, you know, you have air conditioning, we have cars, and we have all these things. So we're not trying to pretend that this is, you know, this 18th century village and we're all, you know, no, no. We want, if you, if you have a historic lamp, it should be used in a historic sort of way. But we also want lighting on our sidewalks and we want lighting on our buildings, but we want it to be discreet. And so that is sort of like, I think people think they're you know, hitting the middle ground, but not successfully because it's sort of like faking a, an electric, you know, it doesn't really work. You know, these attitudes have, have sort of evolved yeah. and we've learned and, you know, we have lots of things that we used to approve that we don't approve today. <laughs> okay, so here's an example of a, you know, of a long expanse of opaque wall um, that, you know, we could recommend some discrete fixtures that are located down low that would help illuminate that area. Um, if you had a long expanse of a fence or something that you know doesn't have an overhang, we've got some fixtures we can we can point out for you. I wanted to point this out because um, I just think the the color rendering of these lights are they're too cool and too intense. Um, obviously, you mean for, the haunted for the haunted hotel? hotel, yeah, it's you know it's great that it you know really illuminates the the area. Um, but it's just so hot, you know, it detracts from the overall aesthetic of the street. And then we, I want to keep going and then we end up with this very dark 
building here that has these al alcoves where people like to sleep and do other things, and it ends up you know, being really problematic. At, at Cross on Door has these beautiful puck lamps that could be on that are all the way across both storefronts. But if those lights were on all night long, it would be this great, you know, aesthetic. It's it's very very, you know, um, appropriate. Really yeah, super wall. appropriate to you know to that kind of storefront from you know probably early 20th century, um, and it would eliminate the desirability of sleeping in the alcoves because it'd be brightly lit. So also, this is a great opportunity when you have a storefront like this to have lights that are in each bay that stay on all night. And that way it helps to wash the sidewalk with illumination. You know, th and this is, a, I, I feel for you know, this property owner, I really do, and, and they've wanted to work with us to put gates up. But I believe that all they need to do is illuminate that and nobody would want to sleep there. So, so this is a hard block. Yeah, this is a hard block because exactly the things we've talked about. You know, we have, a, a big courtyard here, we have a big courtyard here, um, and, you know, short of the, there being a lot of street lamps, or the desire on their part to add some lighting to the sidewalk on their opaque fences, this is a really dark block. Um, and then, exacerbating that, and we can cross over to the other side, you know, this building being the Beauregard Kai's house and being so historically significant, authentically, brilliantly reinterpreted to a period, it doesn't have an opportunity to have discrete lighting attached to it. I mean, it, it, it isn't to say that it's impossible to do. I do believe that with the help of a good lighting designer, you could illuminate this house in a way that would be appropriate to the things that we've been talking about. You know, if there was a way to discreetly light the porch, probably by having fixtures that are hidden by the fascia, that could wash the face of the building, um, nice reflected light out onto the sidewalk, instead of this, you know, half a block that's very, very dark, except for one floodlight. Sonyet House is, this building down here with the red bricks and the, and the green shutters, um, they do a beautiful job illuminating that building. Um, and I, you know, it's, it's very even, it's very discreet. The warmth, it, it, it is so complementary to the architecture. Um, and, it, and they have the buildings on both sides of the street. So it's just this wonderful example of, of, of lighting done well. This is a good example of a building that does not have overhangs that although the fixtures aren't what we would recommend. They do a good job in illuminating the building and keeping this whole quarter of a block from being dark. So this is a great example of how to do a, a difficult, a different lighting job. Um, I just wanted to point this out that we were talking about uh, lighting violations and because we're walking by tonight, they're gonna get a violation tomorrow. So um, the idea of putting lights like that um, on your, your gallery rail are completely wrong. And the, the color of them is intensely blue. Um, this one has decorative lights kind of all over the place. There's no logic to it. You know, in the carriageway, that's lovely. I would have less problem with the two up top if it was a different color. But the one here, it all of a sudden, just this is weird composition that makes no sense at all. One of the things on a, on a streetscape that's, that's dark like this, that's caused by the buildings being set back, this would be a great example of places where you could have lighting at each, at each gateway, which would be really nice. Um, and then some of these lower level, you know, discrete lights along and along just to help wash the, 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 the sidewalk for the, this is, I mean, it's almost an entire block. And, we, you know, once again, we're not necessarily trying to replicate a historic condition. We're more about, you know, if you're going to use decorative lighting, how, what would be the, 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 the intent and how would they do it? For decorative fixtures, I would definitely, and I would, for security purposes, I would definitely go to electric. 
Um, if you wanted to have it just for mood and you know setting at the entrance to your house, then gas makes sense because you're not really doing it for you know a sense of security. It's more for the the decorative aspect of it. But a decorative fixture with gas um, um, along this uh, sidewalk wouldn't do you any good. It'd just be pretty. This is a great example of um, a shotgun with some beautiful um, soffit lighting. Um, the, you know the decorative soffit vents that are very common in these overhangs. Uh, great opportunity for lighting, particularly since LED lights um, last so long, so you don't have to change them out because those are not the easiest things to change out. Um, but that is a beautiful example of a, a wonderful warm lighting, very subtle. We don't encourage installing something that is non-historic, like a house that never had a balcony. Um, although you might be able to make a case for it having a balcony because the house type might, um, it's, 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 we, we, that's more aggressive. You know, not every house had a balcony and every house needs to have a balcony. This is not as invasive and something that would be more readily, you know, an opportunity. So this is the block that I was going to mention that we're going to, we're going to head up this way. Um, and this is a, I'm really, really glad that there's a difference of architecture on this block. These are much more uh, low slung bungalows, um, late 19th, early 20th century. Um, so it's a little bit different um, in the ways to illuminate them. Um, so with this one, it's, it's, it's kind of a missed opportunity. I, you can see that they have decorative fixtures that are gas. Um, and they're attractive, but unfortunately that style of fixture is wrong for the style of the house. Um, this is not an arts and crafts house. It's an obviously homage to arts and crafts architecture in the style of the lamp. Um, and, and that's something that we have sometimes we get in trouble with because somebody falls in love with a fixture and then we tell them we love the fixture too but you can't have it, but your neighbor can have it because it goes on their house. Um, so, you know, you, we, it'd, be, it'd be great to work with them. This is such a great, you know, example of a very unusual Ed Edwardian, particularly in the quarter, but that for, for the nerds like us is just wrong. So, also a thing. <clears throat> um, and another thing too, we don't mind colored lights for Mardi Gras. We don't mind colored lights for holidays. But Mardi Gras is over. So, St. <laughs> Patrick's Day. You're correct. Yeah. So you're right. All right. All right. Well, uh, after that, anyway, we, we 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 look the other way for a little while, but then we we we, we want things to kind of return back to normal eventually. Um, what, we're, what we're seeking is sort of an evenness across the block face. Now that it's dark, we can kind of start to see, you know, the difference it makes when we have, you know, street lights and properties illuminating the sidewalk. Um, you can see how it makes a difference, like at the corner down here, where we have a nicely illuminated couple of houses, then a dark corner, and then a dark, you know, stretch across the street. You know, I think we've seen examples of, of, of buildings that have done a really great job of doing it like Sonyet House and, and that one on the corner across the street from all the uh, gas lanterns. Yeah. You know, I think that those do a really great job of, of consistently illuminating um, and you can understand why that helps with the streetscape and the sense of security. So anyway, um, I hope this has been helpful and uh, informative and um, Please reach out. My contact information is on the VCC and the HDLC websites. Um, happy to have a site visit. If you want us to come by and take a look at your situation, um, make recommendations. You know, we'll do, we'll do custom custom recommendations for you. So y'all have a nice evening. All right. Good night.